All right, let's cut the nonsense. This video isn't going to be about motivational quotes or telling you to go to class, join clubs, work hard, read the textbook. This video isn't about that. So if that's what you're interested in, click away now. This video is about real world tips on how to actually pass engineering and get through your degree while keeping your mental and physical health. What you need is real, actionable advice and steps to be able to make it through the degree. And for that, you need more than just a highlighter and a positive attitude. You need to strategize, manage your time, and most importantly, not crack under the pressure. And this video is gonna tell you exactly how to do that. Engineering can be tough, mentally, physically, and sometimes emotionally. So get ready. We're diving into how you can make it through the most efficient way possible. Now, first things first, don't try and be a hero. I get it. You want to impress your parents, your friends, or maybe even yourself by taking five or six courses a semester. Spoiler alert, a lot of people can't do that. And that's not a diss or an insult, that's just reality. Engineering can be brutal. Each course requires a lot of attention and work. Like from lectures to assignments, practicing, midterms, quizzes, labs, the list just goes on and on. You can easily see that spreading yourself too thin is the easiest way to crash and burn out. Now, if you're overloaded, please, Talk to your academic advisor and drop a class. Seriously, there's no shame in it. If you drop a course, it doesn't mean that you're weak or you can't handle the degree. It means that you're smart enough to know your limits. You are in university to finish your degree, not to destroy yourself by taking five or six classes at once. And let me tell you, no one will care if you take an extra semester or even an extra year to finish your degree, as long as you end up finishing it. You won't win a gold medal for pushing through and suffering. The point of this is to pass, understand the material, and leave with your sanity intact. Remember, this degree isn't a sprint, it's a marathon, and the smart ones know to pace themselves. Spread out the hard classes across semesters and pace your workload. It's all about playing the long game. The more strategic you are with your course load, the better your chances not only of surviving, but thriving. Now, before you drop a class, talk to somebody at your school, like an academic advisor. The only reason I say that is because often universities will have a class that only runs once a year, which could be a prerequisite for another course that runs once a year. So if you drop the wrong class, you may be in a bit of a pickle. So before you drop a class, talk to an advisor at your school and just be honest. Say, I would like to drop a class. What's the best one I can drop? Tip two, now that you've sorted out your course load, let's talk about the tools. One of the best investments that you can make in engineering is an iPad slash tablet. Now you may be thinking, hey, I got through high school without an iPad. I got through high school without a tablet. I'll be just fine taking notes on a piece of paper and with a pencil or a pen. And you're right, you can absolutely do that. Don't get me wrong. But when you're in your circuits class and your professor redraws the same circuit for the seventh time, you don't want to be the one redrawing the circuit every single time. Think about this. If you have an iPad, you can draw the circuit once, copy it, paste it onto the same sheet, make edits to that, and then keep going every single time. And that's not all. Nowadays, a lot of professors upload notes to their websites or to your class portal beforehand. And what you can do is you can download those notes onto your iPad. And during class, you can write on top of the notes, which is another great way to study. Going back looking at those notes can be invaluable. Now, there's a disclaimer to this. Some classes won't allow iPads, so check beforehand if you're allowed electronic devices in your classroom. Another disclaimer, if you live somewhere where an iPad is an exorbitant amount of money. You don't need an iPad, okay? Don't buy an iPad if you can't afford it because of me. It's 100% possible to pass your degree without an iPad. But if you have the extra funds available and you can swing it, why not go for it? An iPad will allow you to complete your assignments, take notes, and much more super efficiently. With the amount of apps that are available nowadays for note taking, calculations, and much more. That being said, iPads are not necessarily the replacement for computers or a laptop because a lot of engineering courses have specific softwares that do not work on a mobile device like an iPad. And in fact, you might notice that sometimes they don't even work on a Mac at all. There's some old programs that some universities use that only run on Windows. So that's another tip to be aware of. The next tip, maximizing project work. A lot of people try and be a hero and try and do everything on their own, but this isn't how engineering school nor the real world will work. Projects are made to be a collaborative effort and projects are a team sport. That's why they exist. Assignments are for you to do yourself. Projects are for you to do with a team. Now, this is a good tip. Try and find people who compliment you. What do I mean by that? For example, if you're good at coding, but you're not good at hardware design, find someone who is for your project. Or another example, if you're really good at lab work, but your chemistry knowledge is weak, find someone whose chemistry knowledge is strong. That way you can balance each other out and support each other and thrive through the project and even teach each other something. Do you want to know what has saved my bacon so many times on tests? 
and brought me over the edge from failing to passing, never ever leave anything blank on a test. Imagine this, you didn't study hard enough and you're writing a midterm, there's 30 minutes left and you have a question you have no idea how to do. If a question is worth five marks and you leave it blank, do you know how many marks you're gonna get? Zero. However, if you know how to solve part of the problem, do it. Write down your assumptions, write down the variables. In fact, rewrite the question in a different way because doing this may not necessarily get you to the right answer, but maybe seeing things from a different perspective, seeing it written out differently, will be able to get you to start doing something. And if you write something down, even if you know how to do just part of the problem, you may get some part marks for that. And if those part marks are what bring you from a fail to a pass, then you writing down what you know may have just saved you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars from having to retake that course. So I'm saying never leave anything blank on a test. Now, let's talk about something that no one really wants to admit, stress and burnout. It's real and there's a high chance that you're gonna experience it. Now, engineering isn't just mentally taxing. It could be physically taxing too. Late nights, impossible deadlines, and constant stress. These are all things that could happen and it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you need to push through the lone wolf sigma male mentality. Grind 24 seven because that's what everyone else is doing. Let me tell you something, that's how you burn out. You're not a robot and your brain needs rest. So please do not feel bad about taking breaks, lightening your course load, or even dropping a class like I said, if it gets too much. You won't be good to anyone, especially yourself, if you're operating at a 30% capacity because you are sleep deprived and running on caffeine and have neglected yourself. Mental health matters and no degree is worth sacrificing that. What's the solution to this? Take time to recharge. Go outside. Touch some grass. Hit the gym. Go on walks. Hang out with friends. You need balance. If you find yourself studying and getting burnt out because you're studying for too long, use techniques where you take a break in between. This can help you stay focused and prevent burnout. Now, let's talk about something super important. Failure. I want you to realize something. In engineering, failure happens, whether that be a quiz or a midterm or an assignment or a final or even a course. Failure is something that can happen. Now, if that happens, I want you to take a deep breath, step back for a sec and realize that it's not the end of the world. But failing necessarily isn't wrong, but failing shows that something isn't right. Now, what do I mean by that? If you fail, okay, it happens, but it could also mean that you're not doing something correctly and you need to rethink your methods. If you're in a class and 70% of the class passes and you're part of the 30 that fails, okay, it happens. But you need to change something because if 70% of the class was able to do something that you weren't, obviously your methods weren't correct. Now, don't beat yourself up for it, but use it as a learning experience to change your methods. Maybe the method that you're using for studying isn't efficient. Maybe you're relying too much on memorization and not actually practicing the problems enough. Maybe you're not studying enough for a test. Maybe your time management isn't correct. Maybe you're not asking questions, or maybe you need to talk to your professor more to ask questions. It doesn't necessarily matter. If you fail a course, it's okay. You can take a course again, but you need to realize that if you take the course again and you don't change anything and you expect different results, then you know what the definition of that is. So please treat failure for what it's worth, a learning experience, and use it to move forward in a more efficient and better manner. Here's the next tip. Go to class. Well, you said, I don't have to go to class. Listen to me when I say this. Going to class isn't always necessarily about learning. It could be about learning a process. Now, what do I mean by that? As you know, engineering is full of math, physics, equations, and complex problems that need to be solved. Sure, you can learn a lot of things online and on your own, and they can be very useful. But there's two things that you can get out of going to class. Firstly, a lot of times in class, professors will solve problems on the board. Now, why is this important? This is important because there's a high chance that these problems might either be on a midterm, a final, or an assignment, or at least a similar problem will be. And that right there is worth its weight in gold. The second reason is, as the professor is solving the problem, you can follow along and see what steps they're taking in what order. Trust me, it'll be a lot easier if you know the process to solving a problem well in advance, rather than the night before a midterm, and you're trying to cram, and you're looking at notes online and you don't know how your professor went from step A to step B. Exams in engineering are often about application, not necessarily memorization. There could be some memorization, but application is very important. So please practice, practice, and practice. Now I know this one might be controversial, 
but this is about clubs. Clubs are great. Great way to get experience, great way to learn more about your degree, great way to get into a job. They're also a great way to sync up a lot of your time. I'm not saying don't join a club. Don't get me wrong, clubs are awesome. Engineering clubs are some of the best things you'll have in university. But if you realize at any point that your club is taking up more time than you can handle, or if you realize that your engineering club is stopping you from studying, it might be smart to take a step back and think, what's the bigger picture here? Yes, you'll have a good club experience, but if you fail your degree, then that club is not really as worth it now, is it? The important part is finding a balance. I'm not saying don't join a club, but do not neglect your coursework just because a club is taking up too much of your time. Remember, it's important to set boundaries, which will be important not only in your university career, but as your career as an engineer as well. Here's another tip that I can't even believe that I have to say, but this isn't high school anymore. Do not act up in class. People are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars to be there, and they're not gonna find your jokes funny. You're gonna do something, and next thing you know, you have 10 people surrounding you, all looking at you like this. Not only that, the professors aren't there to babysit you. If you're goofing off, nobody's impressed. And the time that you spend goofing off, you could be actually looking at the board and trying to learn something. Now here's the last and probably most important tip. Whatever you do, do not cheat. Cause the 5% or 10% that you get from an assignment will not be worth it if you fail the course or worst case, get expelled from your university. So please, it's better to take the L rather than cheat and get caught. So what's the takeaway in summary? Engineering isn't about suffering the most. It's about strategy, efficiency, and knowing when to ask for help. The students who succeed aren't necessarily the smartest. They're the ones who study the smartest. They know how to manage their time, use the right tools, and they know how to ask for help when they need it. So please never be afraid to ask your professors for help. They balance work with self-care, and most importantly, they understand that completing the degree is more important than perfecting every single detail along the way. No one's keeping score of how fast you finish. The goal is to finish, period. So work smart, stay sane, and keep moving forward. Because at the end of the day, the degree is what matters. And remember, no degree is worth your mental or physical health.